Western Conference podcast here live on location, Auckland, New Zealand, brought to you by Dos Cadas Tequila, and we are here with the incomparable, the beautiful Miss Diamond Longy. How you doing? I'm doing so good. Man, see, I feel like we did this before. <laughs> yes, I'm getting deja vu. <laughs> exactly. But we are here because I actually, I, we were here in Aotearoa and just enjoying the scenery and doing different podcasts with different people and to have you here, it was just a blessing because we've seen what you've done in the past. But I came to say, I said, you know, we need to know Diamond's story. So thank you for being on the show, first of all. And we want to make sure that we get the story right because you being in this space, you definitely have people looking up to you as, as you know, as a role model because especially the female space. So with that said, introduce yourself to the people of the Western Conference Podcast and we'll go down from there. Kia ora everyone, Malo Lele. My name is Diamond Langi and I'm here with this talented <laughs> individual and I'm so happy that you have me here on your yes. podcast. So thank you so much. How, but let's take it back to the beginning. Like we know you from the Sosefina movie. We know you from the Miss you know, Universe with New Zealand. How did this whole thing take place? Like you're a girl that's, you know, you, you were just talking about your 801, 801 ties, but take us back to how that whole transition came about. Yeah, so I was born here in yeah. Auckland, New Zealand. In Auckland. In Auckland, wow. yes. And then at the age of nine, my family and I moved to Salt Lake City, Utah. So Salt Lake City, Utah, the 801. 801. Come on, represent it one time. <laughs> Yeah, and so even though I was born here yeah. in New Zealand, I feel so much of my home is in Glendale. Yeah. So shout out Glendale, 801, man. Eight yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that like a transition from Auckland to then you're, you're at a young age. Coming back, when did you come back to New Zealand? I came back when I was 17. Wow, that's yeah. crazy because that's right in the middle of your wonder years. Absolutely. So like, so you went to elementary school out in the, in 801, and then you started high school here, or you was already in the mid in middle of high school. Yeah, I was. About to finish my last year of high school. Wow. Yeah, and you know how that's big in America. I was about to say, how, how do you leave all your friends because you're with them for so long? <laughs> Tell me how that was even a transition for you to kind of say, hey, hey guys, I'm going to New Zealand for my senior year? Senior year. Wow. My gosh, and you know how it is in America. Yes. Like, everyone preps the lays. There's, like, graduation for parties. For the senior year. Yeah. Yeah. I, to be honest, it was so hard for me. It was so Man. heartbreaking because yeah. I was looking forward to it. Before I, I came, I actually ran for president. For my high school. Oh, wow. Yeah. Before you even came. Before I came. Yeah. So it was like a huge thing. Yeah. And it was me competing against four other guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, so you was the only female. I was the only female. Oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> so this yeah. is already setting you up for, for success because you're going against four dudes. Yeah. And you're the only female. So how'd that even turn out? I didn't win. Yeah. Unfortunately, it came. So there was like elimination process. Yeah. And then it came down to the bottom two, which was me and this other guy. And it was so competitive because, <laughs> yeah, in his junior high, he was the president. Yeah. And in my junior high, I was the president. So oh, we so were, it was like, it was. We were like neck to neck. <laughs> <laughs> so who won it? So did you end up winning? No, he won. Oh, hell no. Yeah, he won. <laughs> and you know, I, I feel like it was meant to be. Yeah. Because. A week after that, my parents broke the news to me that we had to move back to New Zealand. How did you take that? Like, come on. It, we all been in high school. We all know, like, that senior year is, like, the year, you know, that you're going to make your decision where that fork in the road is. But for you, it was like the parents kind of breaking that news. Say, hey, we're moving back to New Zealand. Tell us how that even made you feel at that point. Oh, I cried. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, I already, like, you know, you already envisioned it. I mean, for Man. us, like, you know, for me as a young woman, I was like, you know, you can run for prom queen. Yeah. That thing is big. Yeah. Prom, all of that kind of stuff. Graduation, having all the lays. Your like friends. It's so, and we know, how, friends. we know how the polys do it. That's where you covered from head to toe. You can't Absolutely. even see your face sometimes. But now you don't get to experience that. Yeah. Because your parents, you know, dropped this bombshell on you to kind of say, we're going back to New Zealand senior year. How did you transition and how did you adapt to that? In the beginning, it was difficult. It had to be, yeah. You know, I came here and of course, like, I feel America puts this confidence in us yeah, at a very absolutely. young age. So when I came to New Zealand, I didn't realize it, but I was quite confident. Yeah. Where my experience, especially with the school students at yeah. the time, like they were very like mellow, yeah. chill. But you was walking with that chip on I your was shoulder. Like, like, hey, yeah. yeah. And you know, like <laughs> the school that I was in, there was no nail polish. We had to wear uniform. Wow. And I came from like a co-ed school. Yeah. You didn't have to wear uniform. Culture shock culture shock wow. so like it came like i came from like being like a like good yeah student to like coming to new zealand and the teacher was like she's bad yeah, exactly. she's like a you rebel. already had this stigma yeah 
<laughs> you th- so were they like you were the girl from the states, or you got to check them and be like, nah, I'm originally from here. I just kind of went out to Utah. And no, now came back. they didn't even ask me. Wow, they just already made the judgments. Yeah, and yeah. I got mocked. Wow, was, of course. Yeah, I was bullied. Oh, uh, see, when come I, when on. When I came back, yeah. yeah. So how did was- you deal with that? Because I know there's a lot of people, especially females, watching this and went through that. Like, how did you deal with being bullied in high school? It's it's quite a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> See, a lot of people don't have that funny stuff. We would love to hear this one. <laughs> well, because like, well, actually, I was going to drop out of high school because, oh, damn. yeah, I didn't have any friends. Yeah. Like, so. Oh, well, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Coming from a transition of like having a lot of like, I had a lot of close girls, yeah. you know, like not a lot, but I mean like two or three. Yeah. We in did Utah. Every, in Utah. Got we it. did everything together and we're still like best friends. Yeah. Like, to this shout day. out to my girls. Yeah. Yeah. So when I came back and not having like a support system Absolutely. in school. And then on top of that, getting bullied, like it was so hard for me. And, and I remember like. <laughs> Come you whoop their ass. Tell it, let us know. <laughs> she did like a karate thing. Where, but it's like the bullying, you have to take that in because you have to deal with that. And you have to take it in your own way to kind of say, look. It's hard to come from 801 and come back to New Zealand. The bullying for everybody, we can laugh it off now, but it's like when you go through that moment and especially talking about it, it takes you back to that time where you had to deal with that struggle and then deal with that, that the whole thing. How did that come about for you and how, how did you deal with it? Because, you know, you're not having your girls, especially out there, yeah. and you're not having no one out here but family. It's tough to transition. Now you can't wear the nail polish. Now you can't be, <laughs> you know, you're like, okay, I got to wear a uniform now. Yeah. You're not really behind the eight ball. Like, tell yeah. us about how that even came about for you and how you transitioned for it. Yeah, so how I dealt with it was like I would go to the bathroom and I would just cry. Wow. Because I felt so alone. Yeah. You know, I'm so thankful I had my parents. Like, they made me feel complete. But going to school, like, you got to have friends. Man. Yeah. Even to this day. Yeah. It's it's tougher because, you know, now with social media, you know, there's more... You know, pressure on you with social. Back in the day, where well, you didn't have that. Well, we still had as not as much. Being lonely was like you didn't have Instagram to go to and kind of like you know go with friends. You kind of had to just deal with this on your own. Absolutely. Where if you don't have that support system from mom and dad, or you can really can go either way. We see a lot of kids, you know, either go the other way of suicide, which you know that's something we could talk about as well. But you have to sit there and say, as a kid, a lot of pressures on you at that point. So for you not to have that, you know, kind of say, where's my girls at? How did you even say, well, the parents were there, but now with you being alone, how did you deal with it? Yeah, so I told my parents, yeah. like, this was, like, one of the last days. I just told him straight up. I was like, I'm going to go to school, and if I don't make a friend today, I'm going to drop out, and I'm yeah. just going to do performing arts. Yeah. And my mom's like, okay. Oh, so she was with it? Yeah, like, okay. she's like, if you're not happy, I don't want you to That's dope. go to school and suffer. Yeah. And I went to school that day, and I remember sitting down, and I was just... It was it was history class. Yeah. And I just was like, oh, this is my last day. And then, you know, I'm going to like go into the big world, yeah. like being Because you kind of already made up your mind that you was, I'm not going to find a friend. I'm, I'm not just going to go ahead friend. and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I was sitting there and it, there was like a boy sitting next to me. Um, shout out to Sonny. Come yeah. on, Tessa. The savior. <laughs> our savior came there. Yeah. And we are still friends to this wow. day. Yeah. But he turned around and he was like. Hi, I'm Tao Sunny. And then the whole classroom was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy, though? Yeah. Because you was just ready to just say, you know what, mom, I go to school and Tao Sunny just comes up in there and that's crazy. Yeah. And ever since, you guys been friends ever since? Yeah, we've been friends. Yeah. And then he's like, these are my friends. So, like, my first group of friends were like boys. Yeah. Yeah. So then, like, I Oh, the girls like- didn't like that at all. Huh? <laughs> They're like, hold up. You can't just come in here and be friends with all the boys. You're not friends with us. Yeah. So they kind of seen that. It was like, oh, okay, she's cool. It kind of took that confirmation from the girls to say, okay, if he's talking to her, we don't have to keep mocking her. Ah, let's kind of see what she's about. Yeah. Is that kind of what happened? Slowly. Yeah. Slowly. There was still, like, you know, the bullying going yeah. on. But, you know, I'm really thankful for it because I remember this one time. It's funny, but it wasn't funny at yeah. the time. But I was walking, one of the girls was like, Diamond, and she literally pulled my hair. Pookie Jail. Yeah, God in damn. front of, like, in front of, like, the rugby boys. Wow. And I just turned around and grabbed her hair and I tugged it. And I was like, how does it feel? Yeah. And she just laughed. And she's like, wow, you're the first girl that actually fought me back. Wow. See, because she, was, she wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Like, Hold on, I'm from Glendale. Mama. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't expect that. I was so sweet. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But, it, you know, you were at your breaking point at that point. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's going to do that and you already went through what you had went through, that was kind of like, the okay, if she pulls my hair and I don't do nothing, there might be, you know, repercussions. So you, you had to do what you had to do. Yeah, and yeah. so, like, she laughed, and then we became friends. What? 
It's a, your polys are crazy. You, no, oh, I can pull your hair back. Type of vibe. Yeah. <laughs> so after yeah. she pulled your hair, you guys ended up being friends. We ended up yeah. being friends because yeah. she's like, okay, if you could take it and come back and pull my hair, you, you okay? You, you, you're somebody that we could actually be friends with. Yeah. And tell us how it went from there. Like, is that kind of opened you up to say, okay? Now it's kind of a, a breath of fresh air. Now you had your friend and you had her with that instance. Did that kind of just get you going and say, okay, I could do this thing out here in New Zealand? Yeah, I yeah. feel like I had to learn really fast. Yeah. Like making the transition and coming here, you have to be really strong. Like Man. they're really like, they, yes, New Zealand cutthroat. is. They're real cutthroat. Yeah, they're yeah. so cutthroat. New Zealand, of course, I feel like our people are so kind and loving. Yeah. But you have to like really fight for your spot. You gotta have tough skin. Yeah. yeah because if you don't, you could fall by the wayside and tell you, you could fall into that deep depression. Absolutely. And for you to kind of say and transition to that, where, you know, it kind of like goes back and say, yeah, 801 did help me in that aspect. Because if you were just not going through that whole thing out there with your girls and everything, you might have still been stuck in the, in the low place. But it kind of yeah. brought you out of that. And how did that transition to say, okay, we're gonna make this senior year what it do out here in New Zealand? Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, are you guys going to do the whole lace? Yeah. Are you going to mm -hmm. do like the big graduation? Because they wasn't on that. Yeah, they're yeah. like, no, we just get the certificate and that's oh it. I was like, <laughs> you're, no! taking, you're taking this whole party away from me that you've been waiting for. Because as you see every other seniors in, in Glendale, like, okay, I, I can't wait to get to that. So you come in, you're just a certificate. Here you go. Thank you for thank yeah. you for, thank you for participating. <laughs> Thanks for going on. So after you do that, you don't get the lays. You don't get, you know, the, the whole fanfare, the glory. What's the next step for Diamond at that point? Is that where you start to dwell and say, okay, I want to get into the entertainment space? Like, take us to that process. Yeah, so in high school, I was my foot was already in modeling. Got it. And I feel like it was just me understanding New Zealand yeah. as a country. Like, understanding the people without judging it. Yeah. Like, I couldn't come from America and be like, oh, this is what I expect. Yeah. I, I had to be like, oh, this is what New Zealand is. Yeah. Okay, I, I see you. Yeah. And then understanding my place and understanding what kind of woman would I be in this country, my birth country, yeah. you know? So yeah, like what things started happening in modeling and then, yeah. And then I wanted to get into pageants. So, so pageants, but that came from what knowing what the pageantry was back in the States. Absolutely. So you kind of had that know-how and knowledge of it. Like, how did you even, I mean, cause like I said, a lot, not a lot of poly girls grow up and say, I want to be a model. You know what I mean? Because we're so, you know, we're bullied. You know, you have, you know, family members that kind of say, oh, you'll never be. It's just the stigma of our culture. But how was something for you? Because do you have the support of your mom and dad? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They just really shooted me. You know, yeah. like I felt like they knew what the world was and they, they knew what like type of girl that they yeah. raised. So they really heavily protected me. So when things would hit me, yes, like school was different, but I felt like they really helped and prepared me for the yeah. industry. Oh wow! Yeah. So then, when I was in that space, if I don't hear, if I were to hear something and people were like, "Oh, I didn't like that," I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." Yeah. Because like you know, everyone won't understand your art, yeah. and that's okay. Yeah. And was that something a part of the art? Because do you have siblings? Yes, I do have siblings. So when you have siblings, like it's it's kind of like a whole team thing at this point, where you know you have siblings, you have your mom and dad. Like everybody's gonna have a want to do what they do. When you decided to do the modeling, you had the support system of your family. But you had to also do like your own research. Like, how did you go into modeling? You didn't go into it blind. Did you kind of like say, let me see what it takes to be a successful model? Was that something you did? I actually didn't do research. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I feel like because at the time, you know, YouTube, I feel like it was only just YouTube, yeah. MySpace, Bebo yeah. type of vibes. Wow, yeah. So shout out the top eight on MySpace, yeah, by the way. You know, oh my gosh, yes, I miss MySpace, especially like having the song in your profile. Yes, come on. I wish we if they would have did that now, it's like it was, it was crazy because that song kind of told a lot about you. Yeah. Yeah. But did you use MySpace to your advantage at that time? No, just for fun. Yeah. Like just to connect with people, you know, share pictures. But I just remember like because we lived with my aunt at the time when yeah. we moved back from New Zealand. Just walking up and down her hill, like practicing what my walk was. So that hill was the catwalk training. That was the catwalk. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And did you learn it right away or you kind of say, okay, I got to go back to YouTube and see if I'm doing it right? I didn't even know if I was doing it the right way. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, who this... was the teacher? Like, who who's the model here? <laughs> it was just like me, like, just practicing yeah. and getting into the rhythm of, okay, I feel like this is my walk. Yeah. yeah I didn't Once you know... got the walk down, what was your big, big break to kind of say, okay, I can do this modeling thing? Well, it's just going out and doing different auditions. Got it. Yeah. A lot of pressure on the auditions, though. Like, especially in modeling world. Like, is it different... Can you say there's a difference between New Zealand's modeling world and the States? Absolutely. Yeah. In yeah. what aspect? I feel like the States, 
they have opened up more to, you know, different backgrounds. Yeah. Like, I feel like New Zealand has, yeah. but I still feel like sometimes they kind of lean into, yeah. like, a market. But, I mean, New Zealand can't ignore that the percentage of people who live here. Got it, yeah. And kind of took it to another yeah. extreme, yeah. You have to, like, involve everyone, so, yeah. yeah. So, but being in that space and being of Polynesian background, like, that, that was that pressure already on you for it, or did you kind of know that that came with it just being a Polynesian? I didn't realize that at the time. Yeah. I was just having fun. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, I'm I'm vibing with this. I love connecting and networking with yeah. people. And I didn't really was thinking, oh, I'm a Polynesian girl doing this. It yes. was just like I really appreciated being in a space where I can see people we looked alike. Yeah. You know, like, oh, you're Samoan. That's huge. Or, you know, That's Cook huge. Island. Yeah. I loved that. So yeah. So kind of having that background. I mean, you being in New Zealand. Now you're kind of in the modeling space. Like, what's your first big break? Or, like, what's the first big thing that I say, okay, I could probably do this for, for a career as that, at that point in your life? My first big break, I definitely would have to say, was Westfield-style Pacifica. Yes. And what I loved about that, that fashion show was the biggest here yeah. in Aotearoa, and it was ran from a Pacific Islander. Oh, wow. Which really set the tone. He really was the first to really highlight Pacific designers, Pacific models. Wow. And it was televised. Yeah. Oh, so it, was, it was on TV It out was here. on TV. Wow. Yeah. So if you were in that show, you were already like, oh. Yeah. Like. So how that, so you were on the TV in New Zealand. Like did that transition set up where you were walking around and kind of say, hey, that's Diamond from from watching you on TV? Or did you get that notoriety that so, so early in your career? I think I was still just not aware of that. Yeah. Like if people like, would point or something. I think I was just in my own little yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, are they talking, are they talking to me? <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize it at the time because I think us Kiwis, we're kind of just chill. Yeah. Yeah. We noticed that because I tell you, like the mantra from the States, like I told you for everything for New Zealand before I even came out here was once we're warriors. That was like the, the, the pinnacle of what we thought New Zealand was. And obviously it's not. But, you know, as Polynesian families, we kind of held that to a thing. I was like, okay, it's not just a bunch of Jake the Must walking around, not a bunch of bets, mm-hmm. but the story resonated with, you know, Polynesians in the States. But when you come back over here, there's more to it. Like you saying with the pageantry and what you guys had with the Pacificas that was doing as well. That stepping stone into the Miss Universe competition, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that right there is like you go from being on, you know, a local stage. Now it's on a worldwide stage. Like, tell us how that whole transition from going to Miss New Zealand, you representing New Zealand at Miss Universe. Tell us that story. We have to take it back to America. Come on. Because it all started from there, like, seeing Miss America yeah. grace the stage, yeah. you know? Like, and we always knew, like, well, for me, if I watched a contestant representing America, yeah. she didn't come to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? She and knew her shit. Yeah, she was on her she shit. She yeah. knew what she was doing. And so when I came back to New Zealand and then, you know, people were like, hey, you should enter, in, enter in this competition. Yeah. I was like... If I'm going to do this, I really need to do my research. Yeah. So. That's when the homework got to be done. Yeah, the homework has to come in. So I didn't enter the competition until like seven years later. So I studied the organization. For seven years. For seven years. That's crazy. (laughs) That's crazy. It's just like, it don't bother me. I'm I'm in my year four of studying this thing for Miss Universe. And I felt like it was important because I would see the past winners. Yeah. And see okay, there hasn't been a Pacific Island representative. Wow. So if you're going to enter this competition and you're going to represent a body of people, you have to come correct. Yeah. So I didn't want to go in there and be like, oh, hi, you know, just let's just take pictures and stuff. I wanted to go in and be like, no, I'm I'm about this. And if you're going to... Yeah, confidently. And then if they asked me any type of questions or if they put me in any kind of pressure, I was able to handle it. So, yeah. Was that something that you had to practice at home? Because you can't... You get that... You get that whole confidence level for it because when you walk into it, there's a lot of things coming at you. Questions, you know, what nationality you are. You were just like, oh, yeah, boom, 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 and boom. How did that preparation kind of get you prepped for that? Like, what did you do to prep for that? I knew right away, like, branding was so important. Yeah. Like, if you walk into the room, they're going to already clock you. Like, Who taught you about branding, though? Because a lot of people don't know that branding is everything. How did you get that aspect of bringing branding to the table? I feel like I was lucky enough I love fashion. Yeah. Like, I love dressing up ever since I was a young girl. Yeah. I feel like my mom had to kind of tell me off. Like, she's like, you're too young <laughs> to wear high heels. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, come on. But that was like, why are you trying to put lipstick on? Yeah. You wow. Know? So that so that kind of whole discipline kind of gives, okay, now I'm ready for what I'm doing. Now you're in it. Now you kind of say, okay, did the seven years of research. What's the next bit to say? Okay, I can, I'm ready to represent New Zealand. 
I just was like, what would my point of difference be? Yeah. So What's going to set you apart? What is going to set you. me apart? And I was like, I needed something to back me up also in the space that would help. Yeah. So I went and studied styling because I wow. felt like it would make sense. You know what I mean? Like, especially like if you're going to focus on your branding, understanding who you are as a yeah. woman, understanding like if you're going to represent yourself, you want to be authentically you. Ooh, I, Diamond I, was doing her homework, boy, because <laughs> there ain't a lot of people doing that. So you had your homework ready to go. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be anybody else. Yeah. I just wanted to be myself. So I went and studied that. I went to a school called Australian Style Institute. Okay. Studied fashion and the whole aspect yeah. of it. Ended up coming up with my master's degree in it. But that was just more for the sense of. Hold up. Hold up. Just, hold up. Don't just, just bounce. Hold up. <laughs> Don't just throw a master's degree in there and just kind of bounce over there. <laughs> how you? So you have your master's degree in yeah. this? Okay, tell the story again, but don't bounce over it like that. You got the <laughs> masters because it, it, it's a lot of work to get your masters. Tell us how that was. Even, was that a goal of yours? I wouldn't say it was a goal. Yeah. It was just more so learning fashion. Big. You know, like because I always feel like I have to take it back to America yeah. because it's yeah, my experiences. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. So at that time, with the, we're gonna take it back to the United States. <laughs> I had the opportunity to be a part of the premiere from Moana. Got it. And the wow. team that I was working with ended up hiring a stylist. And that's when I was like, wow, they make a bit of money Yeah, um, being in this space. And I just remember the stylist. Like, I was like, I wonder if we have the same taste. Yeah. So he was like picking up items and I was like, oh, I would. That's the little pieces I would yeah. pick as well. So too. you put them to the test. I put it to the test and I was like. Okay, you know when I'm going back home, I'm gonna actually go and study this. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because so that kind of led it under you to kind of say, okay, yeah. if I knew that, I wanted to. So you really did your homework, because there's a lot. I think a lot of females that are, that are hope watching this that saying, there's a lot that goes behind the scenes that we were talking about before this um, interview. That if you don't put that footwork in, you know, it's not gonna be as easy as it seems on the outside. So you basically did your homework and it had you prepped and ready for Miss Universe, right? Yeah. And how did that feeling come about? Just kind of say you're gonna be representing New Zealand at Miss Universe. I was excited. Yeah. You know, I was so happy. I didn't put pressure on myself. Yeah. I was like, man, you know what? You've done your best. You worked really hard. You trained yeah. the hardest. Go and have fun. It was man. time to have fun now, you yeah. know? Because you did all the you did all the grunt work and the footwork. Now it was time to kind of like let your hair down and let you know. Was that a fun experience for you? Being in that whole thing? Like, tell us about how that whole thing went about. Like you're around with the the beautiful women around the world. And you're in that, you know, you're in that stable of everybody that's there. How did that feel for you to kind of say, oh, she's cute. She's cute. Like, where do I stay in this? Man, let me tell you. All the women there are beautiful. <laughs> it's not even like, oh, she's cute. She's yeah, yeah. pretty. They are like. Stunning. Wow. Yeah. Like, you know, and they come with a team. Yeah. Like you have Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Philippines. They do not yeah. come to play. Like for Glanfois. breakfast. Yeah, for breakfast, if, if they're like going to three different events and it's breakfast, yeah. that means three different outfits. Wow. In so you were like, okay, hold up. I got to step my game up. Yeah, it, in a span of three hours. Whoa. Like three different outfits. The makeup is different. The hair is different. Wow. They are not playing. Come on. Because they're representing their country. So they're like, we got to be country. on point. And they are so smart. Yeah. Some of the most brilliant women that yeah. I've met have come from this space and so. i'm glad you said that because it's not just about the looks you have to yeah. have a certain pedigree of you know being brilliant being smart like was that something the aspect of that you also when you studied and research that some of these girls are not just a pretty face like when you realize it because the stigma of people that watch miss universe or one of these pageants are like oh it's that she just has to be prettier than her tell us what there's more to it and what is that more to it I feel like being at Miss Universe, a lot of the contestants, yes, glamour is a big thing, yep. but they're really focused on their branding. Yeah. So if they're getting interviewed, oh my gosh, they are just like so tunnel yeah. focused. You know what I mean? Or if like they're doing certain things, it's like they're playing chess. Yeah. Every single move is calculated. Strategic, yeah. Absolutely. So they're not there to play any games. Like they're just, they're like, I'm here to win. But I was like, for me, I was like, I'm here to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? I think that was in your favor, though. Because I mean, there's so much pressure on you women in this thing when yeah. you are having fun. Some of the other girls are like, okay, she's not taking it serious. Like, nah, she's just having fun. Like, I can see we're just being around. Like, you're talking about Miss Universe. We're not talking about Miss USA. We're talking about Universe and being represented from every country. Like you said, you were going from Valenzuela to the Philippines where this is not just local. This is universal. Mm -hmm. So for you to have that on your, your, your plate, how, what was the outcome of that, by the way? The <laughs> outcome was... 
Um, Miss South Africa won. Yes. So, yeah, she was so deserving. Yeah. Like, just a beautiful young woman that really represented Africa as a whole. Yeah. And I really loved in her final questionnaire where she answered a certain question. She said, I want people, like, I want young girls who look like me to watch this and, and believe that they can make it. Yeah. You wow. know, like, you know, she short hair. Yep. Yep. Just like a real African queen. Yeah. So, yeah, I was so happy that she won. And because yeah. for you guys, it's like, you got it's a competition, of course. But for you guys, it's kind of like a pageant. It's like, oh, South Africa represented, she won, but you guys got behind her. It was like, oh, man, you know, I should have won. It was something that it was a sisterhood almost at that point, right? Absolutely. Like, where, where did that kind of take you from there? Like, the, what doors did Miss Universe open for you going forward? I became close with Miss America. Wow. Yeah. She was such a brilliant woman. Yeah. And we were in the same group. So there was four, four of us. It was Miss America, Miss Australia, Miss Ireland, and me. So wow. we're all yeah. in the same pool. And we had so much fun. Yeah. But I, so, I got so close with her. If I needed help with anything, she I would go, to, yeah, I'll yeah. go knock on her room. <laughs> Can I borrow this? Can I, you know what I mean? But she just was such a lovely, lovely soul. Yeah. yeah. How did that open it up for you for in the Polynesian demographic? Like now the Miss Universe is done. Like how were you accepted after the whole Miss Universe thing with our Polynesian people? Did you kind of say, okay, you're up to a standard where now these little Polynesian girls are looking up to you because now you kind of set the stage for it is possible for these you know women to kind of be in that space? Yeah, I wanted, you know, our women, you know, in our culture to think big. Yeah. Go ahead and Run for Miss America, run yeah. for Miss Australia, run for Miss New Zealand. Yes, we can run for Miss Tonga, Miss Samoa. This is that's so beautiful yeah. as well, too. But whatever birth country you were born in, why not go and compete Come and on. run on that stage as well, too? Yeah. Because we have everything that it takes. Absolutely. Was that a step stone to say, okay, I did the modeling thing? Were you still modeling after Miss Universe? Or you kind of say, I'm going to get into back into acting? Because where are the acting and then also into being an artist and being a singer? How did that all fall into place? Because that's is that going on while the modeling is going on as well? Yeah, so modeling was working very heavily with Miss Universe at yes. the time. But then I was slowly making my way more into acting because Got that it. was the ultimate goal for me. Okay, so that was the standard. You wanted to be an actress coming yeah. out of the box. Okay. I wanted to get into acting. And I felt like it really helped me a lot where yeah. people would see that on my resume and be like, okay, like I'll give her a chance. But yeah. before it was like, they'll just see modeling and be like, uh. Yeah, exactly. Like they'll kind of just like brush it off. They didn't respect it at that point. Yeah. And so what, what made them respect it? Miss Universe New Zealand, but Got then it. I actually had to go study acting. Man. So yeah. you already studied for seven years for the modeling stuff and the mid-pageant. Now you got to study for acting. Like, take us to this chapter of your life where acting is, is going to take over the modeling. Or are you doing both? I'm doing more acting now than modeling. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened was when I got more into the acting space here in New Zealand, yeah. there was a talk that there was a school that you had to study at. And they called it the actor's program. Yeah. But the catch about this school was you had to audition. Like, you can't just get in. Yeah. You know? You have to be picked after you audition for You it. have to pick. Yeah. And they only selected, at the time, was 16 oh, wow. creatives. Yeah. And this is from all around the world, even here in New Zealand. So I heard about this from photographers, other creatives, and they told me it's such a hard school to wow. talk in, you know? Did that, did that discourage you or it kind of like made you want to go harder? I wanted to do it, but I was nervous. Yeah, you know what absolutely. I mean? Like, it's a different ball game from like modeling, like yeah. being on the stage, being like doing pageants to playing a character. Yeah. Like, but being did, in did the zone. modeling help you in that aspect? Like, the discipline you had from modeling, that you take that discipline into the acting that you were doing? Or did that help you or did that hurt you? I felt like it helped me and it hurt me. Got it. Gift and a curse. Yeah. It yeah. gave me the confidence. But what modeling and pageant, I didn't realize that it did to me was added layers oh because gotcha. you know like there's so much cameras you have to smile yeah. you have to like present yourself <laughs> we're acting oh my gosh you have to break everything yeah and you have to be seen right into the character that you're playing or whatever yeah because you, you notice new zealand has a huge like film industry out here like we see all the sione's weddings and a uh, whale rider like you see at, in our pacifica people that this is where it was at like is that something that's, like you being in that space was that like a stepping stone for you to kind of say, okay, I could do these movies now? Like, what was your first big break in acting? I would say my first big break was Sosafina. Nice. And see, like, we're taking this back to America. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, because that's that's something that you because you guys filmed it in the eight hundred eight in the eight hundred one, right? Yeah, we yeah. filmed it in St. George. It's good old St. Yeah. George. And you, so, did you go back from New Zealand to to go do that? Yep. Got it. And how, how, tell us how that whole process came about. It was so funny because I at the time already won Miss New Zealand. Yeah. And going to tell this story was like clashing with the organization. Ah, yeah. got you, got you. Because they're like. <laughs> Do you know what kind of story you, that you're willing to tell? But yeah. for me, I already had the mindset of if you're going to play a character, you're going to play a character. You're yeah. going to tell that story. It's not going in there and you're like, oh, but I'm this is me. Yeah. This is no. When you get into that space, you ha you are a vessel yeah. to tell that character's story, man. You know, so did you kind of you captured that moment to say, OK, this is so you get the script and you kind of say, OK, I'm going to play the lead role in this. Like, for, so that was your first lead role. As a feature film, yes. So, yes. So, because you did all the stuff that led up to that, right? So, this being, what was the pressures of kind of having that lead to make sure that you did this part right? Or were there any? I wasn't selected as the lead. Wow. The yeah. I was actually. Plot twist. Plot twist. <laughs> so, I was casted as a character called Queenie. Okay. Got it. And then two weeks into it, the director and the producer reached out to me. They're like, Ashley, no, we feel like you're Malia. Yeah. So I studied Malia's character, learned all her lines. But you already had studied Queenie before that. I studied Queenie yeah. before that. Got to St. George. And mind you, I'm already playing Malia. Yeah. We get there. We filmed the first scene. Then the director and the producer came to me. They were like, we've made a mistake. And I'm like, oh, no. And I was thinking it was probably the performance. Yeah. And they go... We actually feel like your Sosafina. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. So hold on. what happened to the girl who was playing Sosafina at that point? So Sosafina had to well, the girl that was playing Sosafina had to play Malia. Oh, so you guys swapped parts. We had to swap. Because wow. they were like, we actually feel like she's more Malia and yeah. you're more Sosafina. How does she take it at first? I felt like, of course, as a creative, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Absolutely. You know, because like you've already learned that character's yeah. lines. You're already in that zone, in that space. So making that transition and Sosafina and Malia are Two different yeah, characters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, two different lights. So I could understand where she was coming from. Like, you know, you're going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I re yeah, I remember when they told me, I don't know what it was. I was like, okay. Yeah. Like, I So you already it. go right to it. Yeah. But the transition for her was like, okay, I'm, I'm now I got to take the back seat where it's like, hey, look, girl, I don't know what it is. We got to get this done. Yeah. yeah. And Malia very much was like a, a front yeah. row, you know? Like, her story was like, it's, it's yeah, about her. Absolutely. So... <laughs> Yeah, that transition, I was like, oh, my gosh. But yeah. it was so funny because they were like, we thought that you were like a baddie. Yeah. I don't know why they thought that. Like, they're like, we thought you had like, like, we thought you were like a Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so interesting. Yeah. So after Sosefina, like, I mean, then you start getting. So now social media is a big part of, of, of life now. Yeah. And with Sosefina and with everything that was going on, you know, and now they're trying to see from the Miss Universe. So now that we have this space and platform like Instagram, like the TikToks and everything that's out there. How do you use that to your advantage to kind of showcase what you're doing now and showcase what you're going to do in the future? Man, I'm just so thankful we have that. We yeah. have these platforms, right? Because like we have so much body of work happening. Yeah. And sometimes it's just like if you're on the go, it's hard to like, oh, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what Got I'm it. doing. Just upload everything yeah. on social media and people will know what you're up to, you know, but. Man, back in the days, it was just kind of like everyone would talk about it, yeah. right? Like it was just word of mouth. Hey. You had no credibility behind it. No. But now when you have this resume, so to speak, you have, like, you know, all your your wins and losses on your social media and these platforms. Like, ha have you used that to your advantage or is it a gift and a curse like we talked about before? I would say social media is a gift and a curse. Man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It depends on the way gosh. you use it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you can have so much fun, but I feel like social media right now is like a job. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's like a nine to five job, right? It's like a you nine to post five in the morning, post in the afternoon. Yeah. But how do you use it to your advantage, like for your brand? Because like at the end of the day, we talked about branding earlier. Diamond Lange is a brand. So when you have it on social media, are you treating this as a brand going forward? Because you already have the accolades. You've already started a movie, a feature film. You already had you know Miss Universe under your belt. Like, what's the next step, and how are you using social media for your next step? I feel like just like giving little teasers. Like yeah. I'll give hints, and it's so funny. People will be, they'll message me like, what did you mean by this? Yeah. But they don't realize it's leading to another body of work. Come on. It's just, just leaving little just leading like, them all. Like little, little hints. hints. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the next step for Diamond? Like, you, we're talking about the music. How does, so you, you did the modeling. You're in, you're currently in the acting. Where does the music scene come in for you? Man, you know, I went to watch 
a film. Yeah. And I got so inspired because the actor that was in the film had his own music oh, wow. in the film. And for me, I was like, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Why not? Because I, man, film is like my twin sister. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to tell us what that film is now. Yeah. What was the movie? So that was Inky Pinky Punky. Oh, I man, shout out JP, yeah. man. Shout and, out JP. And it was JP. Yeah. I got so inspired and I was like, why not? Yeah. So like, I was like, I have so much music yeah. that that is just there. And I've kind of put it on hold. Yeah. And the reason being is because like, I lost my father the beginning of this year. Condolences. So for me, it was like, I just had to grieve him. Yeah. You know. In your own way. In my own yeah. way. You know, take things slow. I And I didn't want to do it on anyone's time. Yeah. I wanted to do it on, on my yours, time. Yeah. yeah. And I remember one of the things my dad said to me before he left. He's like, I want you to get back into music. Because my Man. father's a musician. Wow. Yeah. So that's where the that was my next question. That's the, how the music came about for you, was him being in music already. Yeah. So... You know, you, you know, everyone's watched Selena. You know how, like, she wasn't yeah. allowed to play? Exactly. She had to sing? <laughs> oh, so you didn't have the choice. You had I didn't have the choice. <laughs> My dad's like, you better learn these lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> so he already put you at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why music is close to me, but film is, like, my heart. Yeah. So I was trying to find how am I going to add acting? Yeah. Putting into film, add music. Yeah. How how at styling? How we how Come we on, add, Dad, that's total package right yeah, there. You I got the like, trifecta. I was like, how we how are we gonna add this all into yeah. one body of work? And I was like, a music video. Man. Come on now. You know, so I was like, I have to get back into music. Because it ties everything in. It ties it everything. It tells your story. Me. Yeah. Like because so so tell me when when you enter the music, you already had that, you already already dwelling in that. So now you're starting to kind of you you, you want to we've seen ourselves at Homelands and kind of just seeing the artists doing their thing. Then we've seen JP doing interviews. When you see artists kind of doing that, is that a whole... Because like you said, this is a whole different lane. We did the modeling, we did the acting, and now music is like, okay, now that you're going to get into this space, you already had the background in it. How can you say, okay, I can start making my own music, which you already had for it, but now how can you kind of bring it to the forefront? You know, for me, it's like my main focus is like just doing music that I love. Yeah. I don't want to focus on, oh, would they like this? Yeah. Uh, would this be somebody's vibe? It has to be my vibe. Yeah. I first have to really like it, yeah. you know? And it has to be authentically me. What, what I gravitate Not towards. forced on you. Not yeah. forced, you know? I have to naturally gravitate towards it. And you know, when I was watching it, I was like, I need to be there. Yeah. Every single night, I kid you not, bro, I always see myself performing. Yeah. Like on a stage. Already have it in your mind. Like I already have yeah. it. Like I'm, I'm already ready. I remember... One of the lovely girls downstairs, we were talking, yeah. we were like jamming, you know, yeah. downstairs having fun. <laughs> and she said, oh, who do you want to see next year performing? And I said, me. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Diamond. Go I, ahead. I had to say that because I was like, I have to plug it in. Yeah. Already put that like. It's speaking to, to existence. the universe. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? And own up to it. Yeah. So I was like, I'd I love to see myself on that stage. And, and I know I can bring it. Yeah. But see, just it's, have fun. it's crazy to see this confidence in you. Because I think, you know, in today's society where there's a, with social media, there's like a, an expectation of people. When you have confidence, like a lot of women that, you, you know, are, that are on that use that platform, they don't have the confidence like you. Like, what can you tell the, the, the female watching this right now to say, how do you get that confidence? Because there's a lot of women that's watching this that want to be confident like that, but they don't have that. What's that? Maybe you're the next step to get them over. What advice you have for them? I would definitely have to say is love yourself. Yeah. Like fully. And I know that sounds really cliche. I'm not going to be up here and lie and say there wasn't moments I didn't love myself. Absolutely. There's mom there was moments that I would look in the mirror and be like, I'm not enough. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say to the viewers like, oh, I'm, you know, my life was so perfect yeah. and all of that kind of stuff. It was really each and every single day building that self-love. Yeah. Like, and then looking into the mirror, even if I seen myself and I didn't feel like I looked yeah. my best, I was like, this is your best today? Okay. Yeah. We're going to work you with that. You accepted it. I had to accept yeah. it, you know? And it really built on that. Yeah. You know, like, instead of looking at myself in a negative way, it was like just looking at myself and really appreciating my flaws. Yeah. Wow. That right there, I think, is what it is. A lot of people don't appreciate their flaws. And to hear it coming from you and to see what your accolades are, 
not a lot of people are okay with accepting their flaws. Like, is that something that's really huge for you to get to the to the viewers watching right now? Yeah, like I would just say, like, it's an everyday work. Yeah, you know, just wake it up. It doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come overnight. Yeah. You really gotta work at it. Like, wake up, have positive affirmations, yeah. read books. I'm really heavy on this. Yeah, yeah like read books that you feel are going to help and build you up yeah. as an individual. But most importantly, an individual that is you. Yeah. You know, like I feel like social media as a touch based on. Yes, it's it's a pro, but I feel like it's a con. Also, yeah, absolutely. To, in the space of like. Definitely agree. It influences people to, to look a certain way, yeah. be a certain way. But that's why I'm really <laughs> thankful for acting and film. Yeah. Because it really broke down my layers. Like, I still remember when I went in audition, I went in heels, my hair yeah. was done, makeup, <laughs> yeah, yeah. makeup was like, <laughs> to the gods. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then I remember walking out at the end of the day before graduation, yeah. no makeup, hair in a bun, like <laughs> track suit. It really made me love myself. Yeah. You know? So I wasn't afraid. Like, if I were to go out and my hair wasn't cute or whatever, People who knew me back then yeah. were like, are you okay? <laughs> you know? But are you I, going through something? I, are you? It's, you know? But yeah. I wasn't afraid to be seen. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going forward. Like, we talk about, like, and that was good advice for them. Because I'm thinking, it's a gift and a curse because some people wake up and go straight to their phones. They wake up and go straight to Instagram. Like, that's how they're dictating and starting their day where you can go read a book. You can go have your, you know, daily affirmation words in a positive light where if the, it's a gift and a curse. Because if you go there and comparison, I think, is the, kill, is the killer of reality. When you compare yourself to everyone that you're looking at on Instagram, that can definitely be, you know, to your downfall. But I said if they do something like positive and kind of start their day, because I always start my Instagram with a morning message every, every morning. And I always tell people that I do that for myself. But if somebody reads that and kind of say they can start their day positively, it, it goes back to what you were saying. It's like you want to get into these good habits where use social media for the good and the bad, but also know that there's a good and a bad. But you going forward and kind of having all these under your belt. Next step for Diamond would be, okay, now I'm getting into the music scene. What is something that you think that you have to take? What steps do you have to take to kind of say, you have the confidence, you have that. Who and what are you going to have to bring out to the people to say, hey, this is Diamond's new single. Like, are we working on that right now? Absolutely. Tell us about that. What I'm going to bring is myself. Yeah. That's the best that I can offer. Yeah. And it's going to be a body of work that I haven't spoken about. Yeah. And I don't want to come out and be like, this happened to me, this, or I went through this. Yeah. I just want to put it in my art, yeah. you know, and, and speak about it. And if it helps anybody, look, we're here in Aotearoa. We have one of the highest suicide rates. Yeah, absolutely. And having that understanding as Miss New Zealand, I knew, man, I have to, to share what I've yeah, been through. Absolutely. You know, tell my truth. I don't want to add no more layers. Yeah. I don't want to like be that perfect person. People will like exactly. go on social media be like, Diamond has it going on. I want to put my brokenness into my work yeah. and help. Yeah. That's the key focus for me. Yeah. Because that's going to be definitely your motivation going forward. Like, well, what are some of your influences from the music scene that kind of helped you kind of say, okay, I like, what are some of the artists that influence you in your music? I would say my dad. Yeah, man. Yeah, my dad, like... He was such a perfectionist yeah. and just watching him as a creative really taught me a lot as well too, especially growing up. Yeah. Like I knew like if we're going to do something, even with my dad, there was no such thing as being late. Yeah. If he said four o'clock, oh yeah, my yeah. gosh, I had to be there 30 minutes before yeah. four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't miss that window. Yeah. In my own home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pressure was on. The pressure was on, you yeah. know? And I'm just really thankful for that. Like he taught me the importance of learning how to write my own music. Yeah. Like understanding, putting words together. Putting, wow. So you had, a, a, you had a dope teacher. Yeah. So it was just kind of have that to the whole thing where he's teaching you like the A, Bs and Cs of this music business yeah. and kind of have that whole, you know, thing into you already what your repertoire is where going forward, who would you want to work with artist wise into this space? Like are there some artists out there right now that you want to collab with? <laughs> Go ahead, talk it because see me speak it into an existence. The first two that came in when I when I got when I was getting back into music, yeah. like I heard that like these names just popped out yeah. was Bina. Come on, Bina Butter. Yeah. Shout out Bina, man. Shout That's out family Bina, right there. Man. Yeah. Like 
she's such a sweet soul absolutely beautiful absolutely. beautiful young woman and like i love you bina like <laughs> yeah. yeah such a lovely yeah. woman and young girl man Those shout are the, out young girl the man two that just popped out yeah like i don't know who threw it my ancestors yeah. or they're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is it right here because being a butter and young girl it just shows you now in this space that we are in you, there's so much talent out there and i and i was just telling my boys before there's so much talent in new zealand that I think it's untapped. Like we're talking about Hales and Elena and a lot of these people that are coming up. Now we got Diamond out here. Now we got Diamond and Diamond and being a butter collab coming soon, featuring Young Go. Speak it out there. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, I do want to appreciate your time because I think that the world needed to see this side of you. Only because not just here, because we're here on location in New Zealand, but the states and your whole, you know, seamless transition between going from the 801 back here to, to Auckland. Like, what is the last thing that you want to have leave an impression to say to the people that's watching this that's going to leave a lasting impression for Diamond Lange? Stay tuned. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Don't drop the mic on them. We, we don't got insurance, so don't drop the mic. Give it up one time for Diamond Lange. <laughs> Your boy, Big Body Cisco. It's the Western Conference Podcast brought to you by Dos Cotas Tequila. We out, man.